Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Brad. Welcome to our home in Harlem. Come on in. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Before today's episode, click the join button below to support all of the storytelling we do on this channel. Our growing community of members help to directly fund more videos so we can capture these extraordinary homes from around the world. So join today to receive early and exclusive access to new Homeworthy videos. Hey there, I'm Brad Thornton. I'm a designer and we're at my home in Harlem. So this is the first apartment that my partner and I moved into together and we were looking during COVID and we looked at probably 12 apartments all over and just nothing was quite right. And then my partner's sister actually found this spot on Zillow, which I didn't even realize did rentals. We had already decided, we'd seen so much that as long as we didn't hate the place, we said, we're just gonna move forward with it. And we walked in and it was, everything that we had been looking for. We had been so ready to make compromises and concessions, but we were really happy when we didn't have to and particularly love how much light the space gets. There were a lot of things that I think drew us to this apartment. I think number one was just the space that was bigger than any apartment that either of us had ever seen before. We, during, uh, during COVID, we had moved to LA together for a few months, both working from home and I'm not a quiet person. So we realized pretty early on that we needed to have two bedrooms, two bathrooms, and really one non-negotiable was having some type of outdoor space. And we were so lucky we were able to get all of those things. In addition to that, we were also able to take advantage of the fact that while this is a beautiful older building, they had recently done renovations of it. And so everything was clean, it was new, and we were only the second people who had lived here. I've always been drawn to creative types of things, but really I would say that my interest in interiors really started during my time at First Dibs. So the First Dibs is an e-commerce marketplace for fashion, furniture, jewelry, and art. And while I was there, I was working with some of the biggest names in interior design, helping their teams to work on a really pretty incredible projects. Uh, so having that kind of ad hoc education, it really helped me see what was really happening in this industry and how I could perhaps be a part of it. So it was something where I was working more on the partnership side and it really was the leap of faith in saying, you know what, I think I'm going to give this a shot and have been lucky enough to be booked by a number of different people, both companies, uh, organizations for residential interiors, commercial spaces, activations, a few things that are in the mix right now. Uh, but it really was a great, uh, a great segue into the space. So the first thing that you hit when you first come in here is this vestibule area. The way that this building was constructed is they actually combined two different brownstones. And so in order to make it fire safe, they created this kind of area right here. It also helps in terms of noise control as well. This space, it by nature, there's no windows. It's a little bit darker. It can be a little bit gloomy. So I said, let's just embrace that. And so I went for this grass cloth wallpaper to give it a little bit more of a feel is a rental so we did what we could with that but then also it's a, it's a large new york city apartment but at the same time we do still need to optimize for space so that we have our shoe cabinet right here where i took a bit of the wallpaper as well and was able to integrate this to make it fade away a little bit more at the same time you want to give it a little fun little character a little personality of who is going to be in this home and so we have some vintage architectural digest that I had from a shoot that I worked on previously, as well as an area to catch keys and things like that. So this is the front door, but because this was something that they, where they combined two brownstones in order to make it fire safe, they actually have this closed off here. So this door closes the space off and it gives us a little bit more noise, muffling, and just protection in general. So. This is the central space here, and this is the first thing that we saw when we looked at the apartment for the first time. And I'm pretty sure I said something along the lines of, this is stupid. 
There are 11 foot tall ceilings, so much light. The fact that we're at tree level and so we're able to get that little touch of nature. We're right up one block from one of the major thoroughfares in Manhattan, but you wouldn't know it here because it has a very silent quality to it. They oftentimes, they'll do concerts, they'll do different fairs on that space out there, but uh, it's been really nice to have such a clean, open space that we were able to work with. So taking you through a bit of kind of what we had here, as I touched on, we had to combine homes. So this couch was my partner's coming into it, but I really wanted to find a way that we could play off of the neutral being a little bit cooler by incorporating some more warm tones within some of the space. I think one of the greatest ways to inject some personality is to add color to it and also having it pick up on things that are sentimental to you. So this is actually a blanket that my mother brought back from some time abroad. We were able to find pillows in kind of a terracotta and a sage to match with it and create more of a cohesive sense. I'm always gonna have fresh flowers in the house. It's something that it's just always going to be there. Uh, and so we're always finding that through different ways. Uh, I wanna call attention to this etage that we have over here. Uh, fancy way of saying it's a bookshelf. But really what this space was is a way to display some of those things that inspire me. So whether those are different art books, different design books, different collections, having a way to have that along with, of course, some plants, there's never a shortage of plants in this place, was something that felt like a really good way of adding texture and familiarity and warmth to the space. This over here is actually a piece that I made myself. Uh, at the time, in my last apartment, I was living in Hell's Kitchen in a rent-controlled one-bedroom for about six years. The walls that I had moved into were a light blue. and. Honestly, I just kind of liked the idea of having a little bit more warmth to it, having this kind of pulsing, warm terracotta sense of it, and then being able to bring it into this space and have it to call back to that felt really important. It also is right over our keyboard right here. Uh, I do not play, my partner does. Does he play enough for as prominently as it is spaced in the living room? I don't know, that's up to you. But uh, it's really great that he's able to have this outlet right here. And it's also, which brings you right next to the windows. One of the other things when we first saw the space that really we loved was that there was these window seats. We had seen other apartments where they had used these for plants, but we wanted to take the opportunity to create another space. We host a lot, we have a decent amount of spacing, but at the same time, it is a Manhattan apartment, and so you wanna make every space multifunctional. So I had these custom mohair window seats made so that you could sit here a little bit more comfortably, along with these pillows from House of Hackney. And really what it does, it's a great place to curl up, get cozy, and as I mentioned, oftentimes they'll host different things out here on this, uh, this plaza. And so there have been a couple nights, I believe it was the Apollo Spring Benefit and the Soul Train Awards after party. They were set up in tents over here. So we may or may not have been just sitting here, peeking, trying to see who it was that we could see on their way in. But it's been a really cozy space and we really enjoy that. During my time at First Dibs, I was able to get a few things. For the most part, a lot of the things were outside of my budget, but sometimes we would have different returns or things that came broken that we were able to then bring home. So this piece right here, this Chagrin console, which actually has a twin over there, was one of them. And I love it because it kind of fades away. It has this kind of plexi base right here so that it's just very simple, fades into the background. And at the same time, the color feels a little bit more lively. It's not so serious. Part of the reason that it was available was because any time I've had to move these, these snap off. So it'll probably stay with this apartment, but if anybody wants them, I've got the epoxy down pat. So I can definitely help you guys make that move. Coming over here, this was a bit of an unused space for a really long time. We had a chair here, we had this table here. It really didn't end up being used too much. But what we did was we wanted to make this feel a bit more colorful, a bit more centered. When people come in, they've commented that it's like their sex in the city table where we'll do work, uh, oftentimes when it doesn't have lone oranges sitting there. But this is a great place to get work done, do some reading, uh, have Zoom calls. 
it's just another really cozy use of the space. And in terms of the flowers, I'm just loving kind of explosive, crazy English gardens at this point. And so it's my take on that in terms of Manhattan space. So this mirror right here is actually something that we found in the Hudson Valley. I love the shape of it because it's not too hard to find a round mirror, but I love the hexagonal shape of it just being a little bit more prominent. It is an ostrich skin as well, so I thought that that gave it kind of a fun luxe feel to it. And of course, this is the site of many pre-leaving the house selfies. So you gotta make sure that you've got a good statement there. And then in terms of this lamp over here, um, this was something where I was just really, um, had been really inspired by different reed, thin reeded lamps. Um, it's a stylistic adaptation of another, uh, but what I thought was really cool about this, again, is that it has that warm quality to it. I think it's a cliche at this point to say that mixing metals is something that people really enjoy and that looks really good. It has to. We live our lives. We don't live in an all brass or an all silver kind of world. So even though a lot of the fixtures and the pieces that came with the apartment are more of that chrome or silver, I wanted to also bring in the brass of it as well. So it's a vintage piece that I picked up at a shop just outside of the city and it's been a lovely little place to sit by. So in this space right here, again, one of the best ways to make it feel closer to home is to bring in those things that really tie you back to where you're coming from and who you are. And so my, when we moved in, my partner and I both discovered that we had these kind of very peak Midwestern, very 90s family photos. And so we thought that that would be a good way to kind of pay tribute to our families that we had. We both discovered them when our families were together going through the estates after our grandmothers had passed away. So that I think lends another personal touch to them. Everyone has their own version of that, whatever their family situation was. Many people have their own version of that. And so seeing these things, I think always makes people laugh. And the other part that we have right here is the gardens outside of the Louvre. We were walking through with some friends. They took a shot of us. And so while these were our questionably quaffed pasts, this here is to represent the future that we were building together. I despise overhead lighting. So when we came into the space, I wanted to make sure that we had a lot of ambient touches to it. So in addition to the lamps over here, we installed these more modern sconces. Because the place was renovated and it is very modern, there isn't a lot of millwork, there's not really any masonry, we wanted to really keep it streamlined. So we had these long lean sconces just to give that little extra glow of light on either side of the television. And yes, there is a television. I'm not trying to disguise it. I live in a Manhattan apartment. We don't have a separate living room for it. So we have this piece right here. Again, a piece from my partner's mother. Uh, and so being able to host his different video game things and a bunch of different junk that we have as well. Another piece that we have in this space is this chair right here. It's a Theo Roth inspired swivel chair, which has been very helpful whenever we have people in need to make use of the space. This was something that I actually found at Housing Works on the Upper West Side. And it was early on, I still wanted to make sure that I was getting permission for everything because I didn't want to seem like I was just imposing. I sent a picture uh, to my partner when I was looking at it. I sat in it to make sure that no one took it and I waited for him to text me back because I knew that I wanted it and fortunately he did too. So this one now is typically where I'll post up when we're hosting people. So we do like to host a lot here, whether that is having folks over for a game night, having people over to watch something. We get the comment and I think that one of the greatest compliments and also mixed blessing is when people come over and feel so comfortable that they don't really want to leave. We've had brunches here that started at 12 and didn't end till about 10. And at a certain point you gotta, you gotta push them out. But it's been, like I said, a really wonderful compliment that people feel so comfortable here that they want to spend time. Moving in New York is a complete pain and I'm fortunate that I haven't had to do it too much in the 11 years that I've been here so far. For this place, we brought, it was the first time that we were combining two households. And so before we moved in together, we took a bit of an inventory about who had things and how we would bring those together. And there were a few pieces that I had some questions about. Wasn't quite sure that they were going to be the right fit, but 
seeing them come together, there was this beautiful alchemy that I was really surprised by. Of course, there were new things that we had to bring in here as well, but just seeing how certain pieces from that he was bringing in and certain pieces that I had actually could fit really well together because my style is a bit more collected. It is a bit more, you know, vintage and bringing different pieces together. So it was a labor of love and it brought a lot of different things together from both sides. And then of course, sprinkled in some new stuff as well. Before we moved in together, I had been living by myself for about six years. And so I was very used to being able to kind of do whatever it was that I wanted in my space. So this was a, a great lesson in compromise and it admittedly lets me do most of what I want. So that also worked out pretty well. And now let's head into the kitchen. So on our way in, I wanted to point out the other twin part of the console that we had over here, which again, holds just different decorative objects that we have. The painting right here, again, is another one that I did myself because I just like that large scale quality to it. I had previously painted something else on it um, that was, to be candid, a rip off of something else, but someone said that my interpretation of it kind of looked like a punk rock band's logo. And that wasn't really the direction I was trying to go in. So decided to go instead with this really graphic uh, colors here again, to be able to pull the space in. So there's still traces of that underneath with the different mixing of the colors, but keeping it really graphic was something that helped to kind of go along with the modernity of the space that we're in. So this place actually didn't come with an island. So we wanted to make sure that there was an additional space where we could have people, whether it was just us eating, doing some work, um, I do love a lot of very dramatic candles, like oversized tapers. There have been times when during the winter, you know, I'll be in here writing by candlelight and then my partner comes in and he's like, what in the 1780 are you doing? Uh, you know, it's a very, when will my husband return from war kind of energy. But uh, this space right here is great for uh, when we wanna be hosting people, we'll typically put a lot of the food out here and then people will find their way and make themselves comfortable in the space. It's also a great catch-all because when you come in, you just end up tossing whatever you got with you. But I really loved these cantilevered chairs that come with it. Again, being a, a way of pulling in a green, which is a favorite color of mine, and having that same kind of more modern bar quality to it. We have a really lovely large kitchen that we do not take full advantage of because we are definitely still in New York. So it is often something where you grab something on your way home or there's a takeout. Every so often I'll try and get something going over here. But for the most part, more than anything, it's where we'll gather, whether that's us at the end of the day, whether that's if we have people over. We've got the air fryer over there in the kitchen, which I thought would help me eat more healthily. Um, I've just learned how to cook a lot of unhealthy things in an air fryer. But uh, the space here is wonderful. It's clean, it's modern. So one of the things that was also a non-negotiable with my partner is that this place needed to have a dishwasher. I had actually not had one since I'd moved from San Francisco over a decade ago. And so to me, it felt like having like a real luxury which I know for a lot of people watching, this is a very conventional luxury, but for New York, it's, not, it's a big thing. All right, and now I'm going to take you through the hallway to the rest of the apartment. So one of the first things that your eye is probably drawn to is this photo right here. Yes, this is a oversized photo of Beyonce by Nadia Lee Cohen. Uh, my partner is obsessed, has been obsessed. When we first started dating, I went back through his old Instagram photos, as you do, and every photo was tagged Beyonce Nation from 2013 or so. So I knew what I was getting to. This is a hive house. But what was really cool about this is that I loved kind of the helmet Newton equality to it. It also was a lot bigger than what we thought it was going to be. But we're very happy with how it turned out. It added like a nice splash of color and fun to the hallway, which is kind of just long and can be hard to do with. So. That's why I like to do that. So what we have over here is our first of two bathrooms. It's a bathroom, there's not a whole lot to say about it, but it is a really nice size. So like most of the apartment, it does have these really high ceilings. So I wanted to make sure to optimize that by taking the curtain rod as close to the ceiling as possible. It's again, a pretty simple white space, but wanted to add a little bit of color with the tawny rug right here. So the walls are all marble. And that has been something that's been really nice in terms of just creating a more luxurious vibe, but also just easy to keep clean too. 
that's the benefit, I guess, sometimes when you move into a renovated space is that they've done things. There's kind of some cool details like this fish scale metallic at the bottom that's pretty fun. Um, and then, of course, the, the greenery that is always in the bathtub and is definitely not set dressing. Coming a little bit further down the hallways, we'll take you into the primary. So this is the space where my partner and I spend most of our time. So coming on in, again, one of the first things that a lot of people are struck by is the size of it. We're again, very lucky to have these nice, really tall ceilings, a space for a, like a lot of good space for the bed. This was one of the pieces that my partner brought into the space. And candidly, at the beginning, I did not really know where we were gonna have a home for it. And when we came in, they had these great exposed brick, but I also, I asked them, they did not concede, if they were, would consider powder coating it or you know whitewashing it. They did not, and honestly, I'm glad that they didn't because I think that it helps to bring out a lot of the more natural qualities that we've leaned into in the room. So as you'll see in a second, this space connects to the backyard. And so we wanted to have that connective tissue between the natural sense and also the space that we have in here. So um, we love how these pieces came together. And then something else that I thought was really cool that I've always really loved are Ingo Maurer's Uchiwa fans. So I, do not have the budget for those at this point, but did my own interpretation of these here in terms of the sconces, because again, the big light is the worst light, so you wanna make sure that you have a lot of ambient light around you. Uh, this backboard right here, I loved the idea of taking something that was a little bit harder and a little bit harder edge, this kind of marble quality to it, and having that be something to add another layer, the natural veining of the marble, giving that kind of fun texture to it. So I love that that was able to be another call out to nature in the piece, as well as these House of Hackney pillows that are over here. Coming through a bit more, we wanted to have this be a space where, again, it's a bedroom. We both, we have two closets and we have a bathroom in here, which is great, but you always need more storage space. So this was actually a piece that a friend gave me when she was leaving town. Uh, it's cherry wood and I thought it blended so beautifully with the other case piece that we had. Some more of the art right over here. Uh, again, these are some things that I created myself. And this piece right here was actually something that I found in Williamsburg probably 10 years ago and I just thought that it was fun and added another warm wood texture to the space here. Coming through, we have this side table over here, which I love the burl texture of it. Again, if you're picking up on a theme, it's that I love to have a lot of different natural materials and a lot of different natural textures. Uh, just because when you're in your primary bed room and your primary rest space, you wanna feel calm, you wanna feel relaxed. And in a place like New York where everything can be so busy and people are in your face and it's the city and it's grimy and there's a grind to it. Being able to come here and have a relaxation moment, it really is something that I do appreciate a lot. This right here was a tapestry that I found that I really loved, again, bringing in more of kind of those natural themes to it, having it seem a bit like a sunset and also to offset a lot of the green in the space so it didn't just feel like you were, you know, floating in a sea of verdigree. So I love that that was something, also something that's super important to me in my designs is that I love to keep the edges soft. Obviously you can't have all of that, it needs to be a balance, but I love how when you go from something like having the more square table, the square case piece right here, um, to having the more organic shapes of the Uchiwa fans, the curved, the curvilinear shape of this tapestry right here, and then the picking up on the wicker of this as well. So I love to kind of, like I mentioned, keep those, keep the shapes kind of soft, but keep pulling on those natural themes. So this space right here, when we saw it advertised, they refer to this as a sitting room. And so what, it's really great. It's connected to the bedroom, but I've been able to use this as my office space. And so I've kind of decked it out in the same way, uh, picking up on the same themes of the main space while also adding its own kind of distinctive flair to it. You've got this Noguchi style lamp over here, again, picking up on having curvilinear things in the space so it feels nice and soft. Plants as well to bring in that quality of the background, which we're gonna go to soon. And this reproduction of a vintage French verdure tapestry. It's a, been a fun kind of background on the Zoom calls, but also it's just a nice way to continue the theme of it. 
This space right over here is where I will get a lot of my work done when I'm not sitting out at the table in the living room. Uh, if I need a second screen, if I'm looking at different fabric swatches, any of those pieces, this has been a particularly great space for me to work and we're able to have our own space because I am not quiet on the phone. And so my partner really appreciates that. One of the things in my projects is that I like to make sure that they are layered, but at the same time feel clean and cohesive. And this is something that has really been developed over years and years of doing it. I think that like so many things, it's trial and error. You kind of need to figure out what looks good, but if you always kind of go back to those things that you love, those certain kind of touchstones, things that have a patina to them, things that have a color to them, things that have a warmth to them, then you're always gonna be guided back to something where you're gonna be happy. And I think that it, so far in this apartment, my partner has only put his foot down on one piece. It was a mirror that I really thought was great. He wasn't a big fan of it. So um, I'm very grateful that he gives me some good leeway with that. And now let's take you outside. Because the bedroom does serve as the pathway to the outside, it does have to be something that I keep relatively nice. It's definitely nicer today than it normally is, but you want it to be a little bit presentable for the folks that are coming over because then they get to see this, which is one of the greatest parts about the apartment and honestly is what sells it completely for us. So this is our private outdoor space. So I really wanted this to feel like a place where we could host really easily. It was super comfortable and the size of it was enough that we could actually have four people here. So we've got these uh, Fay Good, Too Good Roly Poly chairs. So those are super fun along with a pillow with fabric by Sheila Bridges, the Harlem Twall to call back to the neighborhood that we're in. And this has been a really like fun, wonderful space for us to host people. Uh, I love coming out here in the morning. So pretty much from April till October, you can find me out here in the morning, having my coffee, doing my early work to kind of get the day set up and started. And then if you come over on any evening, you'll probably find us hosting people out here. I uh, wanted to have you know a bit of greenery to it again, because we do have the fortune of being at kind of tree level right here. And so continuing that theme of that, I also like to play up the natural pieces as well. So we have this fabric right here, which is from a Theophilio sample sale. And I loved how it kind of moved. The plissé kind of looked a little bit like water. And so that's something that I love having in the space as well. I would love to say that we use this during the winter, but we are in New York City and it does get very cold here. So we actually have just gotten to open it up for the season. The trees have bloomed. Uh, it's gotten warm enough that we can have people out here. Every so often during the winter, we'll have people out here, but it's a lot more blankets and a lot less fun. Whereas this is just, it's all a good time. A lot of times we will take kind of like evening out here. So whether we're having like a drink out here, uh, sometimes we'll eat food out here. It's just a really great multi-purpose space. And I don't know if you can hear, but the bird, you can hear birds chirping and we are only one block up from one of the major thoroughfares in New York City. So there's a lot of traffic, a lot of noise. But that was the other thing that really drew us to the space is that when you're out here, it's silent. It's so quiet and it just feels like your own private escape. When it comes to my style, I like everything at the heart of it to have warmth. It needs to feel like there's a connection to the people that are going to be living there, but also that it's both luxurious but super livable because this is a space where you are getting away from the craziness of the city, where you can really be calm. And we wanted to also make it a place where people felt like they could come in, nothing was too precious, and it was a really easy place for people to feel comfortable. So at the end of the day, my style is warm, comfortable, colorful, and, and interesting, I would say. And so now I'd love to take you into the other room that has access to the balcony, which is our guest room and my partner's office. So this is our second bedroom, which is our guest room, but also my partner's office as well. And it never looks this clean. So this space, it was kind of a forgotten space for a very long time when we moved here. The other spaces we put together pretty quickly. And eventually we decided that we wanted to add a little bit more color and a little bit more fun to this space. So probably the first thing that a lot of people see when they come in here are the curtains, which are different colors. 
I love to have kind of a separate moment here for the different spaces because the window is so off center. I think it gave us a little bit of playroom for something that was a little bit different. Uh, so this one over here, of course, you have the orange glow of everything. My partner is obsessed with big cats. So this was actually a vintage piece that I found in Hell's Kitchen. Um, and I thought that it was something fun to kind of play off of that. And then also at the same time, because it always has to come back to family and warmth, this was a piece that my partner's mother painted. And so this was something we wanted to have a pretty prime location. I love the idea of floating artwork. So you've got some fish hooks right here that are holding it up against the backdrop of the other curtain. And then you've always got to have flowers. You've got to have flowers in the space. The bedroom is definitely more suited to being, I think, an office or perhaps a nursery, but we have people who stay with us so often and oftentimes it's couples. So we opted for a bigger bed, even if maybe a twin would have made a little bit more sense. I think a house becomes a home when you feel that connection, that love, that warmth. Throughout this place, while we do try and keep it fairly elevated, there are always those different touchstones, family photos, um, different memories that we're bringing into the space and the memories that you create in this space. So having our home set up in such a way that we can host people pretty easily, uh, I never imagined that I would have this much space to host. And so having the ability to bring the people that we love, whether that's a game night or a dinner or hosting people when they're visiting, it's all been such a beautiful way to see this reflection of the life that we're building together. Thanks for watching. Be sure to go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content, shopping guides, and so much more.